In 8.3, we're looking at proportion in a sample and trying to relate that back to proportion inside of a population. And we're going to use P for the proportion. Now, P in the population is regular P. P hat, which is in the textbook here, I think they write it as P prime. That's the proportion in the sample. Uh, we are going to compute really similar to 8.2, where we're going to make a confidence interval, and we're going to have an error uh, bound. And when we do that, before we use T instead of uh, Z, but now we're going to use Z, and this is from a inverse uh, normal distribution inverse. And we're going to use a special one with a standard deviation of one and a uh, mean of zero and that hopefully all makes sense very soon the error bound you multiply z in this case that z score you're going to get by the square root of p times q divided by n and how about here are all the notes q is 1 minus p we're going to use the inverse norm of the standard uh, standard deviation of one function and go ahead and do an example problem so here we have, I'm going to copy all these notes over to the next sheet, paste them in. All right, so we have n is 310. <clears throat> Where are we? n equals 310. And p hat, uh, that was p prime, but I'm just going to use p. Uh, it is 0.21. <clears throat> We're going to need the opposite, Q, which is 1 minus P. And that equals 1 minus that value we just typed in. The complementary probability. Uh, we want a 99% confidence interval. So our confidence is going to be... Uh, 0.99, but again, we have to average this with 100, or average this with 1. So average of that value, comma, 1. Uh, you do have a bunch of these, and you'll start to be able to just know what you need here. Uh, let's go ahead with the z-score. And this is norm. I have it at the top of the screen norm.s.inverse right here returns the inverse of the standard normal cumulative distribution. All you need is a probability, and that's that number right above it. Just like before with the t-score, this should be a number somewhat close to 2. If it's further away from 2, you should be skeptical. Maybe you did something wrong. But here's my z-score. Uh, all we need to do now, get the error bound, and then do this confidence, uh, confidence interval here. So our EBM, it's going to be Z value times square root P times Q. So it's the probability times the complementary probability divided by the sample size. So kind of similar to what we had before. There's our error bound. And now our low and our high value. So low is going to be the mean right here, the proportion, minus the error. So that's our low. Our high is going to be the same thing, just with a plus. So P plus error. All right, so that right there, three decimals we want. Point one fifty to point two seventy. All right.